The conservative and non-conservative forms of partial differential equations are different ways of writing transport equations. Both have some merits and demerits. I want to share some of my views on this, which I can't entirely agree with some of the published books and papers. I would like to hear if anything is wrong. First we shall see the conservative and non-conservative forms of continuity equation and how it is defined in some standard books. The one-dimensional continuity equation in conservative form is Similarly the non-conservative form is The definition of conservativeness as per the book Numerical computation of internal and external flows by C. Hirsch's. Look at all the space derivative terms, if they can be grouped as a divergence operator, then the equation is in conservation form. What it means? The continuity equation has temporal and spatial terms. If we can able to club the spatial terms in the divergence operator we can call, it is in the conservative form. In some cases, we cannot write the spatial terms in the divergence operator. That equation cannot have a conservative form. The conservative equation can be written in non-conservative and conservative form if we have more than two variables in the divergence operator. There is no difference between conservative and non-conservative forms in continuous space, but they appear slightly different when numerical methods are applied to solve those equations. That we call telescoping property. Now, we shall see the telescoping property and how to quantify it. Let's consider the spatial term in the one-dimensional continuity equation. Discretizing the equation using backward in scheme gives. Let's apply the above method on four grids, ranging from i is equal to 0 to i is equal to 3 and study the behavior. The discretized form of the above equation on 4 cell gives The interior points, i is equal to 1 and i is equal to 2 are cancelled out, and we get the inflow flux equal to outflow flux. Scheme which satisfies this property we call as conservative scheme. Now we shall do the same study on the non-conservative form. Discretizing the equation using backward in scheme gives In this case, the interior points, i is equal to 1 and i is equal to 2 are not cancelled out, and inflow flux visually not equal to outflow flux. We know conserved quantity should not be created nor be destroyed. Does that mean conserved discretization is valid and useful and non-conservative form is not valid? We already learned these are different ways of calculating derivatives, more precisely the divergence. We shall try to understand it using some simple problems. The first one is a simple smooth function, where we approximate density as x plus 1. The velocity solution should satisfy the following condition, that rho multiplied with u should be constant, so u equal to 1 by x plus 1. The above solutions are not arbitrarily chosen. When density and velocity are multiplied, we get a constant value so that the derivative is zero. That means they are solutions of the steady state continuity equation. These are the derivatives obtained using conservative and non-conservative discretization which are compared with the exact solution. There is almost no difference in the solution. Now we shall consider the problem have a shock-like structure. The density variation is. Similarly, the velocity variation is. These are the approximate continuous functions of the normal shock relation with the inflow Mach number 2. Similar to the previous study, we shall compare the derivative of the flux obtained using conservative and non-conservative approximations. This solution was obtained using 200 grid points. It is clear that the non-conservative form has some issues in calculating the derivative across the shocks. Because of this, non-conservative discretization may produce a wrong shock speed or it may also produce oscillations across the shocks. If we increase the number of grid points to 1000, we can observe the non-conservative form solution is closer to the exact solution but still, it produces overshoots when compared to the conservative form. 
Before this, we shall see why I feel the way we quantify the conservatives is valid only in a steady state and not valid for an unsteady state. We already saw outflow flux should equal the inflow flux as per the telescoping property. If they are equal, the change of flux across the boundary is constant. That means the derivative of the product of density and velocity should be zero. This is the second term in the continuity equation. If the second term is zero then the first term in the continuity equation should be zero. That means it is a steady state equation. You may ask one question. The fluxes at the boundary are constant and they may allow to change within the boundaries. To answer this question, we shall see the exact solution of the sort shock tube problem and study the fluxes over space. Sort shock tube problem is one of the benchmark problems which has an exact solution used to validate any numerical scheme designed for the gas dynamics Euler equation. One dimensional Euler equation is. The initial condition used for the sort shock tube problem is. The solution to the sort shock tube problem at flow time 0.2 seconds is. The distribution of the fluxes at that flow time is. From this, you can observe that for the X momentum equation, the inflow flux is not equal to the outflow flux. In addition to this, you can note that the flux is not constant over space. There are several areas in the graph where the inflow flux is not equal to the outflow flux. But if we consider the steady state solution, all the spatial variation vanishes and the inflow flux will equal to the outflow flux. This is why I believe the inflow flux equal to the outflow flux is valid only for steady state simulation and not applicable for unsteady problems. In general, conservative schemes like the finite volume method and conservative finite difference methods are considered conservative because they satisfy telescoping property. Writing the equation in conservative form has some advantages when we solve problems having shocks. But claiming the scheme is conservative based on telescoping property or inflow flux equals outflow flux does not make sense to me. This is one interesting test case from Professor Toro's book. We already saw conservative discretization predicts the shock speed better than non-conservative discretization. A conservative scheme may not predict the shock speed well if the conserved quantity is not physically a conserved quantity. It is illustrated using shallow water problem. One dimensional shallow water equation is. Both forms of the shallow water equations are in conservative form because the flux term is in the divergence operator. But they produce different shock speeds when we calculate the shock speed using the runge huguenot condition for the shock speed. Though they are mathematically the same the flux term in the first equation is a conserved quantity and the second equation is not a conserved quantity. In this context conservative means that the quantity should neither be created nor be destroyed. From this, we can observe that the flux term in the divergence operator should be conserved quantity for the accurate estimation of shock speed. We shall summarize what we observed. The conserved form is a way of writing the equation so that all the flux terms are in the divergence operator. Telescoping property is a numerical method way of quantifying that there are no extra source terms in the discretized form of the governing equation due to numerical treatments. It ensures the inflow and outflow flux are equal. I believe this is valid only for steady state problems. This we quantified using one simple theoretical proof and one test case which has an exact solution. We also saw one example where the equations are in the conservative form but the shock speed calculated is different because the quantity in the flux term is not physically a conserved quantity. To ensure complete conservativeness the flux should be a conserved quantity. Just by ensuring, the flux can be written in divergence operator may not always ensure the conservatives. I didn't answer the conservative schemes are useful or not useful. In my experience, writing the scheme in a conservative form helps when we solve compressible flow equations which have shocks. It may not help much in incompressible equations. There are few published paper claims that solution obtained using non-conservative discretizations are more accurate compared to conservative discretization.
This is a way of writing the equation which does not mean schemes that do not satisfy this property are wrong. For example, finite difference schemes and finite element methods use the same governing equations and produce similar results but they may not ensure these properties. Thank you for your patience and watching till the end. I'm glad to hear your opinion and anything you disagree with me.